All right. Looks like we are live. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there? Hopefully everybody's doing good. Keeping the fight going here <laughs> with the insane world that we live in. Okay, thank you for saying audio works. I always wonder about that, making sure I have things plugged in correctly and everything else. So but we'll get started here. First uh, Peter chapter four verse seventeen: For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Um. That's talking about the house of God as in the body of Christ. There's no building in the New Testament. You'll never find one. Um, but judgment begins with us, those of us that are actually born again. We have to judge ourselves. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. The Bible talks about that. Um, so you judge yourself and you say, God, is there any sin in my life that's displeasing in your sight? Or what do I need to clean up and whatever else? Um that's important. But the judgment then, I believe, goes from those who are born again to those who profess that they're born again. And the church buildings out there are absolutely, totally wicked. And all the debating back and forth, well, were there ever good churches? Are there still good churches left? All the thing and whatever else. I'm going to really sum up some things in this video. I'm going to be showing some examples of just abominations in these church buildings that are just unreal, okay? Uh, which is why I don't want anything to do with them. Um, I break fellowship with them and the whole deal. So I don't know if, how many of you have heard of this, but we're going to get into this here. Um, I'm going to play this, and uh, here we go. Throughout the season of Lent, we are continuing our spiritual practice that we are calling fasting from whiteness. Now, of course, I am not someone who can change my skin or change the way that my presence as a white person allows me to walk through this nation with much ease. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, can everybody hear the, just a couple of you right in the comments just say, yeah, I can hear it. Did you hear the guy, the little sodomite guy there? Can everybody hear it? Just making sure. Just want to make sure that everybody can hear the audio on that. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, but, you know, being white allows him to walk anywhere he wants with ease. Um I can tell you right now that there are certain parts of the city where it's a lot of black people or a lot of, you know, Puerto Ricans, Hispanics, whatever else. And you're not walking down in there if you're white. <laughs> so, you know, just weird. Uh, the, this whole thing of, oh, I'm white, so I can go anywhere I want. Uh, no, you can't. Uh, there are bad parts of the city I wouldn't go near. You know, my white skin wouldn't help me one bit. So it's just stupid nonsense. But, you know teaching you that you should be ashamed of how God made you, you know, ridiculous, but let's continue. There's a lot more to go. But during this season of Lent, what we are doing is we are choosing to place at the very center of the worship life of this church, the voices of black people, indigenous people, and other people of color. We have to dismantle. Okay. Um, the first one, and here's the point, because I know a lot of the brethren, the <clears throat> brethren that the people out there that go to church buildings, they'll say, well, we're not like that. That's insulting. You can't say that all churches, you're, you're painting them with a broad brush and all stuff I get accused of. Um, the bad thing is I am not really the, the issue in terms of painting people with a brush, okay, in terms of condemning everybody. The issue is the lost world. And I found out about that last video, that little sissy purple guy there. Um, I found out about him from watching a lost channel and they're saying, look what the churches are doing now. See the lost people, they don't look and say, well, no, Hey, I, I won't condemn that. That's a liberal church. 
there's you know conservative churches then there's liberal churches and i don't want to lump them. they just oh it's church see that's what they'll do so you go into some church someplace the lost world you know atheists and people like that they just lump you all together they all oh, it's just that organized religion stuff but listen to what this guy says more more racism coming from this guy Mantle structural racism and say no to whiteness once and for all. We have to dismantle. How do we say no to whiteness when you are white? Okay. Central patriarchy one. You have to dismantle patriarchy. How are you going to do that when you have a Bible? God the Father. Patriarch. Okay. Once and for all, we have to dismantle an economic system that crushes the many as it privileges the few. We have to welcome and accept people of all genders and all sexual identities and orientations. We have to build community, not walls. We have to value human life, not yeah. guns. This past Thursday. <laughs> We're not to value guns. Uh, yeah, okay, sure, right. And it's funny, too, you know, there's people that are being pressed, and they're not making much money and all this stuff. I wonder what that guy makes a living, you know, a year, probably quite a bit, probably six figures a year. A lot of these church building, you know, pastors, these hirelings, they're making six figures a year easily. But the First Presbyterian Church of Iowa City prayed to the God of pronouns. Okay. March 31st was the International Transgender Day of Visibility. So today I wish to pray a prayer that was written for this incredible day. Oh God of pronouns, we give praise to the Great One. You shadow, you shatter all stereotypes, making every single person male and female. Male and female, intersex, non-binary, in your image. Exactly in your image. God of pronouns who said you can call me he. You, you know, you can you have to love these idiots too, that they can't even come up with a speech on their own. They have to either read a teleprompter or read a piece of paper. Oh, so stupid. Let's continue. He or she or they, whatever makes you feel closest to me, we give you thanks and praise to the great I am, the great they them. Do support racial justice, equity, and compassion in, re in human relations. Yes. Do you affirm that white privilege is unfair and harmful to those who have it and to those who do not? Yes. Do you affirm that white privilege and the culture of white supremacy must be dismantled where it is present? Yes. Do you support racial equity, justice, and liberation for every person? Yes. Uh, one of the things we talked about... Uh, let me just say this. The thing of white privilege, um, there is a lot of white people in this country that live a lot poorer than black people in this country. You know, I don't hate black people that are doing better than me financially or something. Whatever. Hey, good for you. You work hard for your house. Well, praise the Lord. You got a nice house. Good. So weird. People, all that they're doing is they're just trying to make war happen, you know, which they will inevitably lose. You know, there's a lot of, well, we'll get into that right now, but we'll continue here. This this one cracks me up. This is another good one. This first one is kind of a comedy one. Then we get into more serious stuff of why I hate church buildings after this. About in the uh, the class uh, with um, Gary and Marsha before we formed uh, was the, how problematic the idea of the melting pot is in in our in American culture. And uh, at least one better metaphor, I guess, is uh, tossed salad. Uh, tossed <laughs> salad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, tossed salad. That's better than the melting pot. Yeah. <laughs> you take some salad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, tossed salad. Yeah. Well, God's going to toss these guys. You know, oh, don't spew them, out. spew them out of his mouth. Tossed salad. So let's get back to the tossed salad talk here. 
cost salad. It is about valuing the diversity, savoring it, appreciating it. And I, I just think that's a helpful metaphor to keep in mind too as we're having these conversations. Even in Hollywood, right? Like it's always, you know, happy stories for white people. And then a lot of the time the black characters have a struggle that they have to overcome. Um, when I think about Black Panther, right, what that movie meant to black kids, I think, I take for granted that before that all of the superheroes were white and looked like me and my children and my husband. I grew up as a racist. <laughs> I'm trying to get away from that. I'm trying to work at it. It's not easy. We've all grown up in that situation because of the color of our skin, white. We've had privileges that a lot of people in this country and in this world haven't had. God of the yeah. now. Yeah, so there's the first one, okay? Um, absolutely insane. And like I said, I mm. found out about this because of a lost man making fun of these churches. You know? It's just... Yeah. God Absolutely ridiculous. Care. You know, the whole thing is, you know, all these people there, they're not going to say, okay, hey, you know what? I'll give my house to somebody that's, you know, some poor black person down in the ghetto or something like that. You know, we'll switch houses. They're not going to do it. They wouldn't do it to save their lives. But I'll show you this thing here. I heard about this deal that the, this guy here, the Undertaker wrestler guy, and he supposedly got saved and, um, Checked into it. You know, he's on the Joe Rogan show at the same time he's doing this. All he got saved and all this. And he's on the Joe Rogan show, you know, using all kinds of profanity and whatever. I mean, but just to show you again the anemic nature of these salvation decisions that people are making with these big church things here. He did not get saved. We'll, we'll see here. Okay. What's that Ford do about here? He's talking about his wife wants him to go to church, you know. <laughs> yeah. Let's continue. Church with me one time. I'm like, babe, look, I'm gonna walk in there and the rafters are gonna start shaking. And, uh, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I believe in God. I'm good. Just, I don't want to, you know, it's not, it's not gonna work. But she, you know, she was very persistent and she, she wanted, you know, she wanted me to be the man that I could be. And, and that has nothing to do with being the Undertaker. Um, and so I went and uh, I was, I was, it was just the perfect circumstance at the, at the perfect time. She, she pushed me and I went reluctantly, but once I got there and, you know, I, I grew up, I grew up Catholic and, you know, so I'm thinking. Grew up Catholic. Hmm. Hmm. No, no uh, tie-ins or anything there. No you know. convention. Yeah, Catholic. The Catholic Church makes the very best atheists, by the way. If you haven't uh, figured that out by now, but let's continue. And myself, man, oh man, I don't want to kneel. I don't want to get down on the pew. I'm a, I mean, after 17 surgeries, you can figure my body doesn't really feel good all the time. So I'm like, I'm like, so there were no pews. There were no, you know, I didn't know there was no kneeling and everything. And I was just, I just had this. Once again, it was kind of like the Eggman deal. Like I, I was getting myself worked up, right? Yeah. Because I, I was thinking, okay. All right, pastor's going to see me, and he is just going to throw fire and brimstone right at me. <laughs> sinner, sinner, you know. And it, and it, and it. Um, isn't that the pastor's job to convince the lost that they're sinners? I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mm -hmm. but to look, 17. Yeah, but look what the uh, pastor does for him. Look what his, his uh, impression of the guy was. And it wasn't nothing like that. Mac and and his, awesome. Julia, his family, they, they were really awesome. And it was it was more it was more of a, like of a conversation, you know. Mm -hmm. And I found myself from being you know kind of tense and pensive to kind of leaning in, and like, wow, this is yeah, this is this is this is pretty cool. This is yeah, wow, wow. It is this, pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, man, that's what you know. Coming to God as a sinner is all about. It's pretty cool. Not going to watch any more of that one, but I saw that not long ago, and I thought, 
yeah, okay, yeah, he's really saved. A lot of these celebrity salvations and everything else, they're just disgusting. He's stupid. So, yeah, but the, what we're going to go to next, and of course, a guy like, like that, you know, then they come out and they're trying to make merchandise of the whole thing. He'll just get shipped around from church building to church building, and he'll do little talks and things, and then he'll be on other secular things, and he'll use profanity and whatever. <laughs> yeah. Because he's um, a devil. <laughs> he's, he's a devil, yeah. Uh, <laughs> little boy here, but uh, has better understanding. Yeah. But um, now we'll get back to one here that I picked on before. This guy's just a classic, you know, professional wrestler, you know, preacher here. John Dorsey. I've talked about him with the Baptists and everything else. Devil um, Dorsey. Yeah, Devil Dorsey. But uh, he's he says some stuff in this sermon, and this is a uh, January twenty eighth of two thousand twenty two. You can see the date right there. And um, but some of the stuff the guy says again. See, the Baptists will say, "Oh, we're we're not at all like that modern the, the purple church guy and the, the all the other ashamed of your whiteness and you know tall salad and all that stuff." But okay, sh 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 please quiet down a little bit. We're not at all like that, but you know we're we're conservative. Well, let's go with the conservative churches now. Okay, the Baptists. Let's talk about that for a little bit here. Listen to what some of the stuff this guy says. Telling you they've turned their lights out. Uh, they've all took their church clothes off. Uh, they took their church clothes off. Chapter and verse on that. Your Sunday best, in other words. Mm -hmm. But let's continue. It's coming to a head. Uh, are they going to need something real? Uh, are they going to need a church uh, where God is? Uh, that's why we got to stay. Uh, They're going to need a church where God is. No scripture. And these guys, they'll stand up there and they'll say, I'm a Bible believer in all matters of faith and practice. No, they're not. That's a lie. Okay? But listen to what he says here coming up. I like we are tonight. Hey, man. I ain't know my Bible, but I might here in a minute. The man of God, the pastor here, and I can stand before you. We ain't discuss nothing we're going to preach. We ain't discussed, we ain't even talked about preaching today. Hey Amen. I don't even want to tell you what I was talked about. And it ain't been about church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Um, we haven't uh, talked about the Bible. We haven't talked about church. I don't even want to tell you what we talked about. Huh? You know, you just, okay. And and the thing is, you say, well, now, brother, you're just pecking on the, I've been around these Baptist pastors. I've been around these guys. I've been in their homes. Okay, I don't know Dorsey personally, but I've met a lot of others like him, and they don't talk about the Bible. They're not just lying. You know, when you get around us, if anybody ever comes here and talks to us, we just talk about the Bible almost nonstop. And this thing, how's it relate to the scriptures? You know, it reminds me of the verse. We talk about the Bible all the time. But you get around these Baptist pastors, yeah, you get around when they're not in church. Oh man, they'll talk about all kinds of stuff. Hey, you know, there's this, there's this joke about this farm daughter, and she. That's what I've been saying for years, and he's literally saying it right here. So, uh, that's cool. Let's, okay, we'll skip here to an hour. And he keeps going off about, you know, he's just ranting and raving and going off about things. Um, you know, we, we might get to the Bible eventually here, but, you know, yeah. So, here we go. More fun. Back with them big metal straps, and he is a chewing that stuff. He said, Sonny, he said, You ever chewed any back? I was a Christian, you know. <laughs> um, he's working on a farm and a tobacco farm, is what he's talking about. <laughs> I didn't smoke or chew. I know I ain't read the Bible yet, but we're doing pretty good, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. I know I ain't read the Bible yet, but we're doing pretty good, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. So he's standing up there, and he's preaching hasn't read from the bible yet but i feel pretty good about why would you even say that mm -hmm. you know it's just weird turning your bible hey get your bible out king james bible out. i mean how long does it take me to get people to turn in their bibles when i'm preaching in one of my sermons yeah you know it's insane i feel i'm feeling pretty good about it oh yeah okay let's continue i said i don't smoke or chew or run with those who do <laughs> sorry you need to turn the tv off or whatever that is well, there's a little camera. Hello, y'all. 
Hey, man. Hey, man. We'll just skip forward to 114 here. I didn't I didn't actually even watch the whole thing. I got through a couple, you know, a little bit of it. I endured, you know, and I finally just said, uh, OK, I can't watch anymore. Of this guy. It's crazy. I won't subject people to too much of this, but but uh, here he goes off. Let's see what he's talking about. I'm glad there will be dying grace. Hallelujah. Dying grace. Hallelujah. Um, almost sounds kind of like the Roman Catholic, uh, you know, uh, last rites type of thing. Dying grace. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we'll continue here. Yeah, and, and uh, I just saw the, the comment here, brother. The gold tassel martial law flag, flags standing strong in the background. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dying grace. Right there with the eagle on top. Yeah, military uh -huh. ensign, if you don't know about that. It's a government structure that they're in, in other words. Mm -hmm. But let's continue with what Nutty Boy says here. Hey, man. Hi. Hey, man. Where are we at now? In chapter two, chapter one, not only is there a wealth, there's a walk in chapter four and five. I don't know where we're at. <laughs> I don't know where we're at. I'm just flipping through the Bible, just kind of telling you what I think it says. And I don't really know. But let, let me listen. Let's listen to what the guy says. Uh, uh, chapter two, there's a position we have as a believer. There's a building that'll never be destroyed. I believe it's Ephesians 2. We're fitly framed together about 20 and 21 and 19 and 22. We're building together. He's just giving a synopsis of what the book of Ephesians is about. He's not even saying, okay, let's read the scriptures here. He just, uh, it's a bad, he's just flipping the pages. I, yeah, the, it's chapter three. Uh, yeah, it's talking. And this is Bible believing preaching. Mm. This is the stuff I should feel bad about because I'm not partaking in it. Listen to a little bit more. These privileges as a believer in chapter number three. What's them privileges as a brotherhood? That'll never be dissolved. Are y'all not tired of the brethren of fussing and of fighting? I'm glad we got to have them. We ain't, we ain't gonna have no separation amongst the brethren. Hey man, and you better be. We ain't gonna have no separation amongst the brethren. Uh, well, then you probably should leave church buildings because they separate all time. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, crazy. Um, I'll skip forward here. What's the real guy at John Dorsey. No. Okay, here we go. Now listen to what he says here. And again, I've known these Baptist preachers, they'll do the same thing, you know. Oh, they'll they'll joke about sin and oh, I was just kidding, you know. Watch what he says. He's talking about he was in the vehicle with some guy who's a firefighter or some police or something like this, and they're going along and the guy gets a call or something and he's speeding really fast. And this and he's saying, Hey, slow down, slow down, you're trying to kill us. And and uh, his wife says, no, speed up. This is fun. Listen to what he says. Oh, packages, by the way. She threw that leg down on the floor and she said, boy, this is what I've been looking for, some action. <laughs> She's like, hold on, youngins. Pour it to it, Jonathan. <laughs> I turned around. I cussed her out. Y'all hear me? <laughs> I told them two girls in the back. I said, y'all, put, put your fingers in your ears. You don't need to hear what I got to say. Uh, okay, tell his daughters, you know, put your fingers in your ears. You don't have to hear what I, I need to say here. I'm going to cuss, you know, your mom out. Oh, it's just, he's just joking. You'll hear what he says here in a minute. But see, again, Baptist uh, carnival preaching, they'll do this thing of they'll go to the scriptures and then they'll tell little funny stories and little, little whatever else and things. They're just working the crowd is all that they're doing. I ain't lying. Well, I'm lying about the cussing part <laughs> out loud, but I did in my heart and under my breath. I, I cussed in my heart and under my breath. Uh, well, that would probably be, probably line up with the scripture where Jesus said the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Out of the heart, you know, comes all the evil things and whatever else. I mean, what an admission to make. You're a preacher and you stand up there and you say, I cussed my wife out. Oh, I did in my heart, you know. And this is what conservative Baptist type of church. 
that these people will look down on you because you don't go to their church building. Mm -hmm. For filling the Bible. Yeah. So you say, well, yeah, but these people are all still fringe, brother. Okay, then let's go with one of uh, our own, supposedly. Um, here we have the Sam Gipp channel. Okay, now I've looked up to Sam Gipp. I have a lot of his books and things. I've met him in person, uh, you know, shook his hand, talked to him face to face and the, and the whole deal. Um, yeah, but the stuff he says in here is just inexcusable, just totally inexcusable. Hey, man, I was... I just preach when they read it. I appreciate when they read it the way I wrote it. Thank you. Thank you, brother. It was good. It's good. Hey, good news. February 12th, 2022. So this is just, you know, not even two months ago or whatever. Yeah, not even two months ago. Okay. And good to be in church. Man, I'm telling you what, that's getting more meaning all the time. Uh, you guys know that it's crazy times we live in. Um. You, you, you know, know what I did, I did the other day? Now, now think about this. Think if I told you this, that I did this a year ago. Walked in a bank with a mask on and walked out with money and did not get arrested. Funny, funny, funny. Oh, that's, that's a funny thing, you know. Just making a funny joke about wearing a face mask. No science to back it up. Just ridiculous a bunch of nonsense you know a little piece of cloth is going to protect you from a deadly virus that you can get and you don't even know you had it i mean <sighs> just insane and you'll see he takes it to the next level here in a couple minutes i mean you can't make that stuff up so um but it's good it's good to be saved good to be in church so good to be in church man i love being in church i really do i just uh isn't it good that God put this? You know, you know God put this here. I, I'm not against. God put this here. No, he didn't. Chapter and verse. I mean, come on. This is lying. It's flat out lying. God mm -hmm. put this here. No, he did not. Mm -hmm. See, that's the problem with these church building guys. They'll say, yes, brother, we know it's the, the people. It's not the building. We get it. We get it. But then they'll turn right around and say, God put this here. God gave us this church. God is the one who controls it. They'll go completely against scripture. They elevate tradition above scripture. That's why I'm against this thing mm -hmm. of these church buildings. Mm -hmm. but let's continue. Lost people getting saved in church service. I got I got saved in a church service. But you know what I like? I, this church, God put the church here and the pastor according to Ephesians chapter four for the edification of the saints. Uh, what what was the church? Yeah. What's the church that God put here? It's not the building. And they said that all the stuff of the building and everything else, all the little Sunday best and all this waste of, you know, mm -hmm. millions of dollars per yeah. building, you know, many times. And, and it's just, it's insane. For what? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. This is for you. And that's what I always kind of like to call this, this room a sanctuary as opposed to an auditorium, just because you work out there and it's, it's more crazy than ever. Right. And I don't know about you, but, but don't you just go, can't wait till Sunday to sit around a bunch of sane people and talk about God. So good to be in church. Really. Yeah. <laughs> sit, sit around a, a, you know, with a bunch of saved people and talk about God. No, they don't. No, they don't. They talk about hunting. They talk about the weather. They talk about politics. They talk about uh, whatever. I mean, come on, man. It's a social see, but world. see, yeah. But see, the whole thing is. That's what these guys do. The leaders, they do this to keep the people in there. It's just so disgusting. And they know better. That's the whole thing. That's the thing that upsets me. These guys know better. Ruckman knew better. Gip knows better. All these guys know better. Why are you continuing it? Yeah. You know. And if you're continuing in it and there's no ch chastening of the Lord, I have to start asking questions. People say, oh, you're making a salvation issue. Well, what am I supposed to do? It's ridiculous. It's stupid. You know? Yeah, quiet, please. It really is. Uh, I want you to open your Bibles to Job chapter 2. I'm excited about this message. I just down, downloaded it this afternoon. And I'm, I'm really hoping it's a good one. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to, um, I don't want to say, I want to defend some people tonight. Uh, we're in an age in our country when the good people have to be defended. Is that not true? Uh, they talk about Columbus like he was, uh, you know, a trespasser. And... Uh, 
Uh, you know, they're tearing down. Isn't it funny they tear down statues of Jerusalem? You know, Columbus was a Catholic, by the way. So just to get that out there. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and don't tear the one down of Lenin. And, and isn't it amazing when, and I'm not a TV fan, but when television takes the cop programs off like they're the bad guys, which is why if you got to have a mask, I got that one, okay? Two reasons. One, because I support them. Two, if I ever get pulled up for speeding, go to put... <laughs> Can I help you, friend? What more do I need to say? Um, you know, going along with this whole thing, the whole pandemic, scandemic thing and everything else, it's it was a lie from the beginning. And don't tell me, well... Yeah, but we can, you know, we can make legal excuses. You can't make excuses for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so insane. It's so ridiculous. It's hurting people. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've seen elderly people and they got the stinking thing on and they're just, you can see it's, it's giving them difficulty breathing and they're, they're struggling. And I'm thinking, oh man, this thing has to stop. It has to stop. It's making it far easier for criminals to go into stores and rob places and people and things. I mean, it's it's sickening. It's disgusting. And well, we'll just kind of make jokes about it, you know, and and things. You're by these guys. What they do, they'll make jokes. The Bible talks about make, fools make a mock at sin. That's what they're doing. Oh, we had to go along with it, so we'll just kind of make jokes about it and just pretend oh, it's not a big deal. Oh, come on, and whatever else. So that's going to be it for this. Um, it just really ticks me off that even the best of the church buildings out there are just openly wicked like this. It really angers me. Um, so yeah, that's why we have to separate from this whole movement here and whatever else. And, oh, oh, they're going to call you wicked and whatever. It doesn't even matter. So um, I'll stop sharing here. And uh, I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything else. Um, I am. I actually have a study I'm going to be doing on uh, the working of miracles. Is it for today? I did a uh, have all the study notes done for it and everything else. We had some other things to do today, so not going to be recording it today. I don't know if I'll be doing it tomorrow or whenever. But uh, a lot of things going on. But um. um Okay, here's a good question. Brian, how can I send you videos to debunk? Um, hmm, put them in the comments of, of my videos, and I hopefully I can see them that way. Uh, please understand out there, a lot of people, uh, me having an email address publicly available, it makes it really bad because I, you know, I just get a huge flood of emails, and I just can't handle them all and everything. Um, so, uh, okay. I tried posting links, to YouTube, deleting it. Yeah. Okay. I'll say it this way. If you can just say maybe the title, put the title of a video in or something or, or, I don't know how you would do that. They will delete the links if you put the links in. Um, a question. Why do you never say book, chapter, and verse? Which book of the Bible? That's a good point. <laughs> it's I'm repeating things I learned over the years. Um, but that's a good point. I should say chapter and verse, you know. Uh, but or, or I should say book, chapter, and verse, excuse me. Um, uh, hi, Brian. I recently completed an expose of the Salvation Army that I was going to send you. They have asked, uh, also asked white people to apologize for being racist just because they are white. I did hear something about that, but that's, that's interesting. Um, just... That's crazy. Um, uh, 
Have you seen the recent video of James White celebrating his anti-KJV book and saying he made a dent in the KJV movement? No, I didn't. I didn't see that. You know, um, that's an interesting thing because a lot of these guys that are anti-King James Bible, you know, I, I'm going to be doing something on this whole thing in the future um, because these guys, what they do is they pride themselves in destroying people's faith in the King James Bible. And then while, while saying... I don't care what you use. You can use a King James Bible. It's a good Bible. I don't use one and whatever else. But then they'll go out and attack people that use King James Bibles. So, um, I saw Lawson recently backpedaled and tried to say that the church is the people. Um, so if the government shuts his doors, it was the building, not the church. <laughs> Hypocrite, yeah. Not surprising. Um, racism is just another tool of government control to take the fo focus off of evil and divide the people in foolishness. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've had great conversations with black people, you know, it's, it's you know, whatever. But see, they want black people to hate white people, white people to hate black people, and pretty soon you're wanting to kill people for no reason. But yeah, it's, you know, Satan, another sermon idea, but the, Satan has a whole little deck of cards that he likes to play, and, and the racism thing is one of them. Divide and conquer people. Do you actually street preaching in towns or cities? No, I haven't in many years. Um, I used to, but uh, I just got into the video ministry thing and and uh, really got busy. So, um, but yeah. You're of the. A BLM leader that just purchased a six million dollar mansion. No, <laughs> it's that's for all the poor, underprivileged black folks in the ghettos and things like that. There, she's going to let them live there. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the peep? Uh, the uh, what do you think about the push out there for people to adopt orthodoxy? I've heard about that, and I orthodox the Orthodox Church system, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, whatever. I'm really weak on that one. I don't understand it all that well. And Islam, I'm not overly well versed on Islam. Those are two things I know enough that I could get by with talking with one in person, but I'm not real great on either one of them, to be honest with you. I should study those more. But how do you get over failures? Um, well, that depends on how bad the failure is. Sometimes I've done things that were so stupid and I just really, it vexes me very deeply and I'm hurt very deeply for a while about it just because I was so dumb. But um, you just kind of pray about it and um, ask the Lord's forgiveness and and you have to move on sometimes. If it's something that you did wrong to somebody, well then go to them and ask for their forgiveness and, and you humble yourself and apologize. Um, if it's something that there's no way to apologize for it, well, you just have to get it fixed up between you and the Lord. Um, what is the best way to reach the, and witness to church people? Uh, go as they leave their service to stop some to talk to. How should I get a meaningful witnessing going to church people? Um, if you go outside of a church building, normally they'll take it sort of as a, oh, we're being attacked. Um, they put tracks on their vehicles. Oh, it's some cult that did that. They're really mind controlled that they're doing the right thing. Um, it's just something you have to say, you know, did you shut down during the pandemic? Why did you, why did they shut down and whatever, you know, there's different things that you can do like that. A lot of people came out of the church building thing during the whole pandemic because they saw their church was fake. What do you think about the world religion? happening now it's it's a smokescreen i don't believe that there will be a the antichrist religion is going to be a blending of all religions i don't believe that i think it's going to be roman catholicism 
they're just trying to get people distracted on that. Um, will you make a video on Jehovah's Witness? Um, I have actually one. I, I don't know if it's still up. Um, reasoning and examining from the Holy Scriptures or something like that. But I should probably do more on, on the uh, Jehovah's Witness thing. They they had a track that they were handing out in my neighborhood about the New World Order um, being a good thing. Essentially, I did something about that. But uh, I, you know, God sent me a Jehovah's Witness for my birthday, I think it was called. I um, was reading in the Gospels and Book of Acts and was wondering if we are to sell, get rid of, uh, what we have like the apostles disciples did no because they did that thing early on because they were expecting the kingdom to come in um and uh they did sort of a communal living thing and that was later undone so the book of acts is a transitional book they did certain things in the early part because the gospel was being um you know confirmed to the jews with signs and wonders and then later on they rejected nationally so at that point it went more to the gentiles um have you read the recent articles where john macarthur told a woman to stay with her husband who abused her and her kids do you think abuse uh, a biblical grounds to divorce um separation is what should be done in, a, in an abuse situation um and then if the husband if the husband is a true scum bucket then he will usually run off on, with some other woman or whatever else and then when he commits adultery then you can divorce um but uh yeah do you think world war three has started um early stages i think so yeah i think that this new war is going to be a whole different thing because it can be fought you know through economics it can be fought through food supply cutting off food chains and whatever else and um i mean it's warfare 21st century warfare is different than world war one world war two far different um and it's going to get really messy um your thoughts and opinions on the russia and ukraine situation um obviously it's real there's things there but there are movements and in terms of there are people you know there's bombs going off people getting killed and whatever else i'm sure of that but uh there's a lot more to it and i haven't really done a huge amount of study into the whole thing but it's just being used to basically lay the framework for world war three is what i believe um Do you believe the Lord can show us things through dreams? Uh, very, very sketchy to get into the, the dreaming thing. I have a whole sermon on that. Dreams and near-death experiences. Um, dangerous to get into. Um, so. People in Catholic church buildings, can some people in them be saved? Uh, they won't keep going there. If they get saved, God will get them out of it. Um, Roman Catholicism is very wicked. So. Ukraine is acting like Ustashi. The Azaz logo is the same as the Ustashi. Um, Catholic fascists killing their own people. That's what's happening. Yeah, that sounds pretty re reasonable to me. I know that there's a Nazi organization there in, in Ukraine. So, yeah. Does God give you prophetic dreams? No. I have a more sure word of prophecy. Will you be doing any more off-grid videos? Um, not any kind of seminar type of stuff, but I might be doing some more stuff 
off grid, you know, type of interesting videos and whatever else. How's your back? Um, pretty much back to normal. There's a little tiny bit of swelling yet down at the very base of my spine. I don't know what all is damaged and whatever, but I'm doing a lot of nutritional health and things, but the pain's pretty much gone. Um, the video I uploaded of me splitting firewood, I'm not moving around quite as fast as I normally would. Um, and thankfully, Oliver was there to help pick up stuff off the ground and whatever to keep me from bending down and whatever else. But uh, um, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, thank you to everybody out there that prayed for my back. I really do appreciate that. Feeling, feeling a lot better. Are you going to do Saturday live streams more? Because if you do, I can tune in. Um, we just had to come down to the office today. Sometimes I'm off on Saturdays, you know, in terms of being, I don't come here. We have work to do on the weekend, but we'll see. Um, did you read all or most of those books you have in the background? No. A lot of these are for reference. I've read a lot of them, but a lot of these are just, things you know this whole shelf back here like that above my head most of that stuff was sent to me by a brother and i haven't read those it's just kind of for uh reference should i have a wedding ring because it's pagan um there's no scripture to condemn that to say oh you shouldn't have wedding rings and whatever else it's a cultural thing there's no scripture for it there's no scripture against it so if it's your culture, okay, fine. If you have a conviction about it, okay, fine. It's not a big deal. Um, do you see any pastors of these church buildings change their ways? Well, um, many years ago, I was contacted by a guy. He was an NIV um, using pastor. And somebody sent him my documentary, The Real Bible Version Issue Exposed. And he watched it and he went into his church building and he took all the IVs out of the pews, went out to the dumpster and threw all of them in the dumpster, put King James Bibles in. And he went in and he was and he got up Sunday morning and he said to the people, I was wrong. I've been preaching out of an NIV. It's satanic. It's bad. Um, I will never again do that. I will preach only the King James Bible from now on. I think he lasted about a month or two. I think he said half the families got up and walked out when he made that statement. He lasted about a month or two and um, they kicked him out of the church. So I haven't heard from him in many years, but occasionally you'll get a, a preacher that's real and they're just completely ignorant and no idea and they'll leave. So, yeah, it does happen sometimes. Um. Um, is it a sin to not have children and fear of the future and all this nonsense? Um, leave that up to God. If you're married and you want to have children, have children. I'm not for birth control, so. Um, thoughts on using Ray Comfort's gospel tracks? Don't waste your money on this stuff. Um, He's not to be trusted. You know, rewrites the King James Bible. He's embarrassed by the King James Bible. He gets into true lordship salvation. You have to clean up a bunch of things before God saves you. That's true lordship salvation. Saying you clean up things because God saved you. No. Sanctification comes after salvation. So, you know, watch out for that whole thing. People say I teach lordship salvation. No, I don't. Okay, I mean, they define it their way, and I define it my way, and this person defines it their way. It's no, there's no lordship salvation in here. Okay, that, that term appears nowhere in the King James Bible. So. Is it wrong that people that go to Dr. Ruckman's church? Um, they can do whatever they want, free country and whatever else, but uh, it's wrong for them to call themselves Bible-believing Christians in all matters of faith and practice. That is a lie when they say that. Um, 
you know, somebody wants to walk into a church building or whatever else, if you want to walk into one and things just to see how bad it is or whatever else, go ahead, do it. I don't care. I'm not going to waste my time doing it. Um, so. Well, uh, question, will we be doing any more nutritional health videos? Um, probably. I'll, I mean, I. Yeah, as the Lord shows me things. Do you think that the title pastor is blasphemous? Um, it's not in scripture. Uh, I don't know if I can make the term, you know, make it a claim that it's blasphemy to say that, but it's certainly not in scripture, so it shouldn't be said. Um, So, no. we'll go to about an hour here, I guess, and then we'll we'll stop for now. But uh, My mom has a cross hanging up with Jesus on it. It's called a crucifix, not a cross. And I'm not sure how I feel about it since it's a graven image, right? Yes, it is. Crucifixes are wicked. Jesus is not on the cross anymore. That's a bad thing. Um, okay, here she's. To give a title to a man instead of God. Yeah. You know. It's not one of God's titles. That's why I'm saying it. You can't technically call it blasphemy or something, but taking a title for a man, you know, it's kind of a, that's a problem. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, question. When do you think martyrdom of saints by the mother of harlots will be an open? When do you think it will be a thing again? That's a tricky question right now because we can still fight a lot of what's going on and open Catholic control and take over and whatever else, we can kind of go against a lot of that right now. Um, the Catholic Church is very much in sort of a wounded position because there's a lot of Catholics that are just in shock at what the Pope's been doing, Pope Francis, um, because he's openly sodomite. He's openly for sodomites, you know, secret sodomite, I'm sure he is. But, um you know, he's into a lot of things. He's he's against the Latin mass. That's a big thing with the Catholics right now. Promoted the the hokey pokies, you know, with the aborted baby tissue culture in them and everything else. So right now the Catholics are not in a strong position to come and start openly killing, you know, Bible believers. So um Are you aware of any good sources for homeschooling materials such as free printable workbooks and or worksheets? How have you homeschooled? What resources you've used? Thank you, Brian. Um, I really can't recommend a whole lot on that because we just kind of um, teach our son in different ways. And you know, we do have some workbooks that people sent us, but I haven't really done any kind of reviews on them or anything in terms of going through it and whatever. Um, have you heard of Michael Pearl? Yes, I have. And I've done videos on the guy. He's There's some real major problems with that guy. I don't recommend him. Um, Why are there no pictures in the Bible? Well, because first and foremost, they are condemned as graven images. Uh, secondly, I don't think too many people in the Bible had time to pose for painting. You know, some artist and whatever else. <laughs> so. What do you think about church buildings and mission trips? Um, 
Well, very much against both, uh, you know, evangelism and things. Um, not, not uh, it, you know, evangelism is fine. Mission type work is, yeah, there are some issues there. Um, have you heard of Jason Cooley? Yeah, I have. Uh, I he, I, I've heard different things about what he thinks of me and whatever else. I know there was a big blow, up, you know, where he he got mad about. I said the post trivers are they have a false god, you know, and whatever. I backed it up with scripture, and um, you know, he said that I was an idiot and a bunch of other things and whatever. That was years ago. I so I don't know. I really don't follow his, you know, what he does. Question, I remember the one time you said that you look at Amazon for reviews of for products and go to eBay to buy. Why is Amazon evil? Not saying it is good, not defending. No, we do it different ways. You know, um, in terms of uh, sometimes I buy from Amazon, sometimes I buy from other websites and whatever else. You know, where we live, there's not a whole lot of stuff in stores around here. We live in the middle of nowhere, which, where do you live? Can I move next to you so we can do in real life ministry um i live in an area that's uh not very populated um it's uh northern maine and very hard life here we like it and as far as living next to me well i live the ministry office here is in town um where we live is actually outside of town out up in the, the mountain area so a um, little hard to live next to me up there because we're off grid. So, um, you know, but we're we're not against people coming to the area, not at all. Um, so, do you think the New Jerusalem is a cube or a pyramid? Just wondering. No idea. Um, can you recommend gospel singers? Uh, that's hard as well because a lot of them, they get into the whole Baptist thing and whatever else. And Baptist system is really messed up. Have you seen Brian McClurg out in live stream a few weeks ago asking you to debate him on the Trinity and a couple of other topics? Um, I don't really follow him that much. Uh, the guy is just so mixed up. I don't, he, just, he went off the deep end. So, um, you know, my whole thing with debating people, because I've been offered that over the years, I'll have a discussion with anybody. That's that's not the issue. But debates are pointless. It's just trying to catch people in little head games and little things and whatever else. There's debate on here. People put out a video against me. Sometimes I answer them. Um, there you go. There's your debate. Um, and I'm more into sort of like the old duels where they would got, come up and they'd challenge some guy to a duel or something, take your glove off and smack him across the face. And that, that meant, okay, we're going to fight and one of us is going to die. Well, um, my stand has always been, if somebody wants to attack this ministry, uh, go ahead. And, um, and if you're in some total heretic, then God's going to get rid of you. And I've seen that happen. So whatever, um, some of these guys are, they're just looking for attention. They're just looking to try to waste my time and I don't have time to waste. So, and they can, you know, they can call me whatever they want to call me. I really could care less. Uh, can you do a study on how we are supposed to conduct ourselves between brethren? Um, I don't know if I've ever done one on that. That's a, I, I don't think I've ever done one on that. I might have to work that out sometime. Have you heard of Paul Lucas Hillview Baptist Church on YouTube? No, I haven't. Um, would you consider doing a few more videos on Islam? Any area really? Well, I haven't really studied it enough to do a whole lot with that. Um,
Question, what's a good balance for Christian ministry with technological advancements? Should Christians seek to disconnect more or use new technology for the Lord? Very good question. Um, it's getting into the, the realm of biometrics and things where you're, you know, the really newest technology type of stuff where you're com combining man and, and machine. And if you're getting into, you know, some of the smartphone type of stuff, whatever, or you could have an app and you could do this and that, Brian, with your website and make it more user interface stuff. I try to steer people away from smartphones because they put off electrical frequencies that are not good for your health. That's why they say in the little warning thing inside the cell phone that, you know, try to keep it away from your head and don't put it right up against your face. Um, there's a lot of things with modern, like you get into the real high tech stuff where you're going 5G, 6G and beyond. And the electrical frequencies, it's millimeter wave and it's really bad for your health. It's really bad for nature. It's killing birds. Again, you can look all that stuff up. So it's kind of, I know what you're saying with the high technology thing, but it's dangerous to get into the really high end stuff. So, you know, I can't say a whole lot against it because I'm, you know, on YouTube and whatever else. And, you know, I have some plans for the future with high definition video and whatever, but there's a line to draw there. Just something to pray about. Um, so, Uh, question. I am not defending Philip Newton. He uses the King James Bible, claiming to believe the Godhead and the resurrection. Is he saved or not? Because I know that there was departing from him. Um, that's between Philip and God. I don't have time for him. Um, he went off on the holiday issue and, you know, just started coming up with some of the most bizarre, weird interpretations. Um, you know, I don't care what people do with holidays. It doesn't bother me one bit. You don't want them fine you do want them fine doesn't matter it's a liberty issue i proved that from scripture um but you go off on that and then all of a sudden you start to change things around you start to mess with liberty and and you fall apart so whatever <laughs> there will probably be some street preacher in the metaverse for virtual reality <laughs> for now <laughs> that'd be funny um uh northern maine which city are you in uh, there are no cities in or well i shouldn't say there are no cities in northern maine but Patton is the town my ministry ad address you can look it up on my website king james video ministries.com is my website so you can go check that out um Did you purchase Ruckman's commentary or did someone gift you the set? Also, what did it cost to buy? Um, I bought most of them. Um, most of the ones up there are are mine. I purchased years ago, many years ago. So I, don't, I can't say what they cost now. I have no idea. But um, I think a few of them were given to me. But for the most part, yeah, I purchased those myself. Most of the Ruckman materials I have, I purchased myself. I spent a lot of you know, money, thousands and thousands of dollars learning from Ruckman and Gail Ripplinger, Chick Publications, Sam Gipp, you know, a lot of those, um, you know, I, I bought every cent I could make, you know, doing tree work and whatever else years ago and just studied and studied and studied. So. I'm interested in hearing about the issues of mission trips. What's wrong with it? Just out of curiosity, ignorant here. Well, you go to a, a country where they're poor and they're going to basically act like they're really interested in the gospel because they know that they're going to get goodies from the missionaries. And a lot of these missionaries, they go down there and they, they're they living actually very well and there's a lot of church support coming in. And it's just not really New Testament type of stuff. I mean, I've been Costa Rica twice and Honduras once on mission trips. And been all over the country here, uh, mostly on the East Coast, uh, on mission trips. And there's issues with it. 
So, um, what's the deal with Acts 2? Are there Christians that were speaking in tongues? I'm just a bit confused by it. The Pentecost, this Pentecostal friend of mine was pointing it out to me. Where the Pentecostals get messed up is they'll they'll say that Acts chapter 2 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14 are the same, and they're not. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 through 14 are gifts given to Christians right now. Acts chapter 2 is a sign gift that was there for the Jews. Okay, that's why Peter's calling them brethren. They're Jews. All right, and um, so it's a totally different thing. The one in Acts chapter 2 is a miraculous gift that's happening there's no learning it and whatever else. First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 12 uh, through 14. It's a gift that's given where people can understand different languages. Some Christians have a real talent for learning languages. That's what it's there for. That's why in First uh, Corinthians 12 through 14, you see the interpretation of tongues. Acts chapter 2, there's no interpretation of tongues. It's just given as a, as a sign. Um, What are your thoughts on Disney? Absolutely satanic, evil, uh, terrible situation there. Yeah, bad. Um, I could say a whole lot on that, but uh, no. Do you play sports with Oliver or no? Like doing catch with a baseball in love? No, we don't really do anything like that. Um, he rides, you know, we have a four-wheeler that we use for working in a snowmobile in the winter. And he, that's sports to him. He's more into motor sports than uh, physical sports. We go hiking, we go kayaking, canoeing, whatever. Um, he has a bike that he rides. So, okay. Um, just seeing if there's anything else I need to answer here quick. Um, Okay. Okay, I'll I'll do two more here. Question any tips to overcoming road rage? I am a different person behind the wheel. There's a lot of dumb drivers in my city. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's just something that you have to pray about. You know, just kind of avoid it and and calm down. Don't let people get to you. Um, so I live in the country. I I couldn't handle being near the city. Um, but I'll stop with this one. Please do that miracle sermon soon. I've had a health issue for a while, and I really need his help. Um, I will be doing it soon, brother. Definitely. Like I said, I have the notes done. I'm going to be getting to it. Um, so. Okay. All right. That's going to be it. Like I said, I was going to end it about an hour, but I went a little bit over there. So not a big deal, but, uh, I'm going to end now. So. These church buildings, um, you know, you know, I, I should probably just say, you know, why I hate church buildings, not why I hate churches. Uh, so, but uh, these church buildings, just stay away from them. They're just so bad. Um, but that's going to be it. Um, we keep going on here, but uh, a lot of good videos coming out here in the future. Some entertaining stuff coming out, Lord willing. Um, please do keep us in your prayers and we will see you in the next video.